I'm Braxton Swag Pierce. Looking for the kill, turns around, great shot up, goes for JW, you're gonna pick him off as well. Great round from Swag, now a one on two, and Swag, oh my god. Start things off, not like it really mattered. Oh, okay, Swag. Oh, okay, Braxton. Can he get the four? Whoa! He's got four! There he is, he went under pass from the terrace. Oh, oh. Well, he's gonna get a third as well. This one health point off the player, 11 on the next. Here we go, Swag gets the third Braxton. It's up against Exist. Swag delivers. At one point, this young man was widely considered among North America's most promising and up-and-coming Counter-Strike talents. He was young, mechanically gifted, and one of the region's future hopes for one day winning a major, the pinnacle of competition in Counter-Strike. But before he could realize his potential, the young prodigy was banned from competing at the highest level of the game he loved and unable to accomplish the heights that, at one point, seemed an inevitability. And then Swag, obviously, in probably the best player in NA. But then, a new opportunity presented itself. Riot Games' brightly colored, explosive entry into the FPS genre, Valorant. And Brax himself is at the helm of this new eSport. Close left. One enemy remains. So, here is the rise, fall, and rise again of Brax. First introduced to Counter-Strike through an older brother and cousin at the age of seven, Braxton Pierce, who would go on to be known under the aliases of Swag and later Brax, first surfaced on the professional CS scene in September of 2011. It was just five days after his 15th birthday, under the full gaming banner at ESEA Invite Season 9. Brax would begin to make a name for himself at these events under various teams, playing pivotal roles in winning the Season 10 and 11 invite tournaments. They would wind up getting demolished by maximum effort, or should I just say swag. The young talent employed aim and game sense like no other during the entire tournament. Having demonstrated a level of maturity way beyond his years, in addition to insane reactions and pinpoint accuracy like this, Brax was truly starting to solidify himself as a future great NA talent with huge room for continued growth. With back and forth real life moves between North Carolina and Louisiana, the teenager found his Counter-Strike global offensive home with Team Dynamic in September of 2012. Here, Brax continued his development, getting the opportunity to test his skills in two ESEA global events and DreamHack Winter 2012. They've got two members heading over here towards that construction area. Swag is having to hold down to buy the cables in. He's able to take down one's out to be down to a two on one left up to Nathan. And this is a huge round coming in. Swag picking up three there. AZK finishing off the last one and Team Dynamic putting it at three to two. The new roster made a splash, taking second place at ESEA's first CSGO invite LAN event. But dwindling performances afterwards eventually spelled the end for the team. Brax then joined Complexity Gaming, where he'd play second at ESEA Season 14 Global Finals behind a powerhouse Ninjas in Pajamas team. The team would earn a third, fourth spot at DreamHack Winter 2013, losing out to eventual winners Fnatic in the semi-finals. At the even Khan jumping up, one of the most uh, composed people I think in Counter-Strike. Complete celebration. What a victory and how they deserve it, Lopez. There, they upset European outfits in Very Games and Astana Dragons, proving that Brax and his teammates had the ability to challenge the very best in CS. While Brax continued to improve, the team was unable to get over the finish line and win a tournament of any real significance, losing twice to a budding I by Power team that featured top-tier NA talent in AZK, Dazed, and Skadoodle. And it was there that Brax would find his next home. 
I Buy Power hit the ground running with some of the best talent North America had to offer. They cruised to victory at SIVO Season 4 and went one better by winning ESEA Season 16 Globals, obliterating his former team in complexity. And uh, so now there's still two other players to worry about. There's going to be Anger. He's going to make a call out there. Now you can see they're going to be able to push up. Left up to Hiko. Max 7, and that is going to do it. Your ESEA Season 16 Land Final Champions is going to be I Buy Power. Things were looking up for I Buy Power. The roster had a strong blend of experience and youth, and on an individual level, Brax was edging ever closer to his prime. The split push they were doing doesn't really quite work out the way they expected. Twag pushing up the middle, but look at all the angles he has to cover here. Looking for the kill, turns around, great shot on Flusher, goes for JW, gonna pick him off as well. Great round from Swag so far. Now a one on two, and what? Swag, oh my god, picks up a triple kill with absolutely stunning precision. And I buy power, win the third round. That was truly something. Again, the team won another SIVO event and would go on to reach the grand finals of the Face It League Season 2, defeating the highly touted LDLC and even taking a map off Fnatic in the final. They're falling like dominoes and I by power, they they win that round in like 20 seconds. That was a, that was a full buy. The I by power rosters were taking the necessary steps to start closing the distance on the top European teams who stood atop the mountain of Counter-Strike. But before they could continue their ascent, the careers of Brax and most of the rest of I by Power were suddenly put to a halt. The Fall. During a SIVO Season 5 game in August of 2014, I by Power, who had already qualified for the playoffs, lost a 16-4 contest against netcodeguides.com, a game they should have, by all accounts, comfortably won. Netcode Guides beating I by Power on Season 16. Speculation that the game was fixed was fueled by some especially confusing plays from I by Power. He's gonna try and get the flank off. He's gonna have two right there. Can they line up for him? What is he doing? Why did he hesitate so much? Doesn't matter, has the CC, gets one, gets taken down. Hayes was so very low. They lined up perfectly for him, but for some reason, oh, he says he wanted the knife. <laughs> <laughs> Just days after the match, an investigation from esports journalist Richard Lewis was published on what is now dot esports, showing chat screenshots from Shazeb Shazam Khan, then working for Netcode Guide's parent company, claiming the match was fixed. The allegations were, at first, emphatically denied. Just listen to Dazed in an interview with Summit 1G. You know, Defender, and I mean, it's absolutely not true. Okay. Did not throw. But it's like, on one hand, by, by me being on here and me giving this whole thing attention, right? Mm -hmm. It's doing just what the guy that wrote the article wants, you know, because all he's doing it for is like the drama and the things like that. Shazam, for his part, later went quiet. And without more evidence, the case remained unresolved. That was until damning new evidence surfaced five months later. In short, more messages and details were brought to light in a further investigative report by Richard Lewis, detailing the fix and uncovering unusual skin bets placed on the game from accounts closely linked to both parties. The match was fixed. Less than two weeks later, Valve's now infamous integrity and fair play ruling was released. It outlined bans from all Valve sponsored events, for Netcode Guide's founder Casey Foster, for the two individuals who had allegedly placed the bets, and finally for Brax and the entire I Buy Power team, with the exception of Skadoodle, who, according to Dazed, never accepted any of the skins won as a result of the bets. Why did Skadoodle not get banned? Because he didn't receive skins and he wasn't a part of it. Skadoodle left the channel when we were talking about it. He said, I want nothing to do with this and bounced. Brax would never compete in a Counter-Strike Major again. EZK is a good guy and Brax is just literally an awesome, just awesome kid. So it sucks when you see that. But. You know, obviously the band, it seemed like I couldn't reach my full potential. The punishment may have seemed unjustly harsh to some, but others, including Brax, agreed it was necessary. That's what happens when you make a choice like that. It's all done, man. And that's what happens. You, you pay the price. And that's what's happening. They're, they're going to pay the price right now. 
Brax would later sign with Cloud9 as a streamer and occasional stand-in, but competitively was stuck in the isolation of smaller, non-Valve-sponsored events, all the while representing a slew of different teams in Torqued, Swole Patrol, and Lazarus, who were arguably a level below a player of Brax's caliber. I've kind of been in the same spot, I guess, for the past couple of years. It just seemed like very stale. No organization with major aspirations could afford to take on the band Prodigy. In 2018, his former iBuyPower teammate Skadoodle went on to win the Boston Major with Cloud9, part of the first North American team to ever win a major and providing a reminder of what could have been for one of NA's top talents. Years later, DreamHack and ESL officially allowed Brax to compete at their tournaments. Have you checked that computer lately? Uh -huh. You're unbanned, bro. Congratulations. Shut the f up. I swear to God. Uh, You're unbanned from ESL. I swear to God. Go check. But in some ways, it was a bittersweet announcement, knowing there was no future for him if and when he got another crack at a major. What Brax could have achieved on an individual level as a player and what he and his teammates could have done for North American CS had they not been banned is unknowable, and it always will be. But this doesn't mark the end of Brax's journey. In 2020, a new game, one mechanically twinned with Counter-Strike, would burst onto the scene, giving Brax the second chance he'd been denied all those years. The Rise Again. Enter Valorant. The bright, bombastic style might contrast with the dusty, toned-down Counter-Strike, but the mechanics are extremely similar, making Riot's tactical shooter a beacon of hope for CSGO's lost sons. Through T1, an organization draped in League of Legends success, Brax became the very first professional Valorant player in March of 2020 which he admitted in an interview with ESPN Esports, happened all before he'd even played the game himself. Uh, have you had a chance to play Valorant yet? I have not, actually. What What do you know f about the game? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can't share much, but what I do know is um, I'm confident that my CSGO skills will make me good at Valorant. And um, I think it will um, benefit CSGO players the most, more than any other game. So I am confident in that aspect. Undoubtedly, that distinction came with its own pressures, but Brax wasn't phased. Yeah, two more mid, two more mid. Maybe you just Nor was T1 CEO Joe Marsh, who knew they had a gem on their hands when it came to Brax, both in and out of the game. Brax was a, a kid that did literally everything you would ask of him. Uh, and he was a model citizen. He was a great, you know, for doing sponsors things. He was great in game. Um, he was as advertised when, in, in the game. I mean, you kind of, you knew it was there, but when it, you watch the CSGO clips and when he was swag, and now you, you're, you see when he's Brax and you're like, all right, is it going to translate? Because that's CSGO is closely aligned to Valorant. Like it should translate. And then when you saw it happening in real time and it was translating over, you felt pretty good about the decision. So yeah, he was he was great. I mean, he was everything you could want and kind of a model you know, member of your org, which is which is great to have someone that you can build around like that. The org even added former I buy power teammates to the mix. In some ways, bringing Brax's story full circle. But that's going to leave the backside open now, though, while all that was going on, Brax gets the kill. They get the spike down. He should be able to work around this, and maybe they start to turn their luck around. Brax, can he get the aim? Oh, oh my goodness, Brax, you absolute beast. He won the 100 Thieves Valorant Invitational in April under Team Shroud, before his team defeated the likes of Team Courage, Ninja, and Myth to come out victorious in June's Twitch Rivals event. One more, one more. Right side clear. Nice. 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 Nice.
They would perform well at the T1 and Nerd Street Showdown tournament, defeating the likes of 100 Thieves and Immortals, but ultimately losing to TSM in the Grand Finals. And despite underwhelming performances from there, Valorant has given Brax something most of us never get, a true second chance. One with the potential of winning major tournaments once again. Of course, this also depends on the future success of Valorant itself. But if anyone can manage to successfully launch a new esport and propel it to tier one status in just a few years, it might be Riot Games. We, we knew right away that they, the potential was there because Riot builds great esports games and they also build global games and they know how to do competitive, competitive esports. Brax parted ways with T1 in February of 2021 and the following month signed with TSM, who despite strong initial performances in Valorant, have since seen their results drop off. The organization is looking to Brax's talent, experience, and popularity to be the injection they need to bring them back to form. His future in competitive esports now has an aura of optimism to it, a glow of endless possibility where once there were limits. It's a future where Brax can be the author of this brand new chapter in his esports career.